excuse me, Psalm 85. Psalm 85. This is a Psalm of David asking the Lord to restore the land, to bring revival. I want to see revival. I pray for revival every day. I want to see a move of God. I hunger for a move of God. We're so caught up in the world. And I understand we have to work, we have to make money to pay the bills and all that. But sometimes we let that come in and, and flood our minds to where that's all we can think about. But I want to see a move of God. And Psalm 85 is a prayer of revival, and we need to see revival. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless our time. Father, bless our time together and help us to listen intently to your word. Lord, we want to see a move of the Holy Spirit upon us. We want to see revival. Penetrate our hearts with your message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Psalm 85 is a prayer of revival. David had looked back on Israel's history and he saw what God had done in the past and he looked ahead and he knew that God could still do something if he only would. And in Psalm 85 it says, Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered their sin. You have taken away all of your wrath. You have turned away or turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O God, of our salvation and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. David had seen the work of the Lord. David had seen great times in the past, and all that was gone because the judgment of God had come down, and he knew that they needed to get right. And Psalm 51 is his prayer of repentance when him and Bathsheba had got together, and he said that that sin was even like broken bones. And we, we've got to the point where we don't even confess sin. We think everything is okay. If it feels good, do it. The media tells us that. Hollywood tells us that. Washington tells us that. And everything is fine, right? It's not, though. When you sin against God, God wants you to say, Hey, God, I've sinned. Forgive me. When's the last time you truly got on your knees? And said, Lord, forgive me. Will you revive us again? Will you bring back your Holy Spirit? David looked ahead and saw the possibility of future revival. And as I look at our land and as I, as I see everything, I can look ahead a little bit. And I can see the possibility of a great move of God. But folks, we've got to, to align ourselves up with God. And before that can happen, God's got to come down and God's got to break our heart. God has got to shake us. But we like status quo. Us four, no more. Let's don't rock the boat. Let's don't try nothing new. Let's don't do anything. But thinking men and women of the world say something big and climactic is about to take place. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. One of three things may be ahead for America. Number one, it may be retribution. Judgment may fall upon us. God said, might say, enough is enough. That's it. Just like our Sunday school lesson this morning about tire. He told them, hey, enough's enough. I'm pulling your power from you. Folks, God's in control. But it may be retribution. He may take them all to the woodshed. Because we all got things in our life we need to clean up. You say, oh, ain't nothing wrong with me, preacher. Well, you 
you got pride, you need to take care of that. So see there, everybody got something. But it may be retribution. Seneca, the Roman historian, told Rome that it's fixing the fall if they didn't change their ways. They wouldn't believe him, and guess what? They fell. Three major things happen when a civilization crumbles. Religious apostasy, people turn away from God. And folks, we have turned away from God. So number one of the three things that happen when a civilization crumbles is apostasy. Number two is moral degradation. People walk away from their morals. They do whatever. They take the standards that God has given us in his word and they chuck it out the door. Frank Sinatra wrote the song and Elvis sang about it. And it's our motto today. I did it my way. Folks, it ain't about us. It's about God. We don't do it our way. We need to find out what God wants to line ourselves up with Him. But number three, political anarchy. The nation disintegrates and goes to pieces. The political realm sells us down the river. And what's going on in America today? Any of this sound familiar to you? The second possibility is the Lord Jesus Himself may come back. Every dial on the compass reports or points to the return of the Lord. I look for the return of the Lord at any minute. It can happen. But number three is there is a possibility that God just might send a great revival. And that's what I'm praying for is that God will send a great revival. And do you want a great revival or do you like doing things just like it is? I don't know about you, but I like seeing people get saved. I like seeing people praise the Lord. I like seeing the church packed out. Is it possible for churches to have revival today? Is it possible for individuals to have revival today? We pray for revival and nothing happens. And that's for many different reasons. But folks, we have got to find out what God wants and line ourselves up with Him. When we want revival more than we want the very air that we breathe, God will do a great and mighty work. And David knew that. David had looked back on Israel and saw how God had blessed them. But he also saw how they turned away from God and kept going down, 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 down. And so he looked to the future and he says, Lord, will you do it again? Oh, God, will you do it again? And, and he says, I know that you can do it again. Turn your wrath from us. Turn your anger from us. Yesterday was the National Day of Prayer and Repentance. We had the church open all day. Some of you said you came and you prayed. That's good. Some of you couldn't because of various things. <coughs> but when I came to lock up last night, that's what I prayed. The Lord laid this on my heart. I was going to start preaching out of the book of Romans this morning. Because I went by touching every pew, praying for each one of you that sit on those pews. This is what God laid on my heart. Folks, we need revival. We need revival in a very bad way. We have got to see what God wants, align ourselves up with Him, and then go His way. Not our way, but His way. We need revival for survival. We're at that point. If we are going to survive, we have got to see a move from God. The greatest need in our lives today is that God shows up. Whether you know it or not, that's your greatest need. That's my greatest need. It's for God to show up and take over. We have run the show too long. 
It's time for us to relinquish the reins and say, here it is, God. You do what you want to do. That was introduction number one, the origin of revival. David prayed, will you revive us again? David recognized that revival only comes from God. The Lord must send revival because of his sovereignty. He is in control over everything, y'all. He can touch one cell in your brain and make you a lover of Jesus. Did you know that? Preacher, how did you know? Because you did it to me. But I'm back. Thank God. But God's in control. God's in control of this church. You know, we, you know, I've got the, the pastoring situation down pat. You know, I know some of y'all want to help, and, and you know, advice is always welcome. But you know, um, me and God talk, and we got this thing under control. We don't need ten pastors. That's what's a, what the problem is in the workforce today. You got too many chiefs and not enough Indians, and that's the way we act everywhere. But folks, we got to understand God is in control. God says, "I hold the kings of the nations in my hand, and I can turn them just like the river, the water in the river, if I want to." He's in control. Six times David said, you have, you have, or thou hast. David had realized that in the past God had done great and mighty work. And we can look back at our past and in the history of America and we can see God has done, has done great and mighty works. But where has he been the last 30 years? We've said no to him in our schools. We've said no to him in our courts. We've said no to him in the job, the workplace. We've said no to him pretty much everywhere. And it's even crept into the church. Now three times he pleads with God, saying, will you, will you, will you send revival again? He wanted revival to happen again. I want revival to happen again. How about you? Do you want revival? Revival has to come from heaven. We can't conjure it up. Yes, we can do things. We can do all kinds of things and pack this place out. But it will be genuine. I want genuine revival. I want to see a genuine move of God. Ezekiel was prophesying. And God said, go to this valley. And it was full of bones. And he said, prophesy to these bones. He said, Lord, there, there's nothing there. All it is is bones. Everything is left. It's gone. And it's a picture of the church. And he said, you just prophesied in them bones. And he started preaching in them bones. And they started getting together. And the hip bone connected to the leg bone. And the leg bone connected to the foot bone. And they started coming together. And then the, the meat and the sinew and all that came together. And they came became a marching army for the Lord Jesus Christ again. And God can do that to us again. But we've got to turn to him. The Lord must send revival because of the seriousness of the times. We're in turbulent times, y'all. We're in turbulent times. We need God to intervene in the life of America if we're going to make it. It ain't President Trump. It ain't Congress. It ain't the Senate. It's God. We can look to the government all we want, but the government will fail you. You can look to men all you want, but mankind will fail you. You better turn to God. You better look to God. Because God is the only one that can get us out of this mess. In 2 Timothy, Paul told Timothy, perilous times are going to come in the last days. You think about everything that's going on in our nation today. Think about everything that's going on in our homes today. And with our young people, even our churches. Revival will never come to a satisfied church. 
And that's the problem with churches today. Not only our church, but every church. They're satisfied. Status quo. Well, I'm here to tell you today I'm dissatisfied. Because I want to see something great happen, don't you? But we've got to be dissatisfied with the way things are. So we see the origin of, the, of revival, but also the opportunity of revival. The emphasis is on us. God sent revival from heaven, but he requires us to meet some certain conditions. We have to prepare. God's people are the subject of revival. Not the lost, but God's people. Revival means to live again. You've got to have Bible before you can have revival. We need to live again, y'all. Our spiritual lives cannot continue to be dormant. It starts with us. Draw a circle around yourself and start praying, Lord, send revival in this circle. Change my heart. Think about Nineveh, Jonah. God told Jonah, go down to Nineveh and preach because I'm going to destroy them. And he tell them that I'm going to destroy them. And you know the story. He went the opposite way and they pitched him over into the sea and the a well or a great fish, whatever you want to, however you want to determine that, swallowed him, took him over there to Nineveh and picked him up on the bank. He said, I guess this is what God really wants. He wants to be preached to Nineveh. So I guess what? I'll preach to Nineveh. So he went through and saying, God's going to destroy you. God's going to kill you. God's going to wipe you out unless you get right with God. And guess what? They got right with God. And Jonah got mad because he didn't want them to get right with God. He wanted God to wipe them out. They were the opposition. But they got right. And the king told everybody, put on your sackcloth and ash and repent and fast and everything, even down to the animals. And they did it. They had a great revival. And we can see that same thing here in America today. We can see that here at Mount Perrin. But there are hindrances to revival. We have reluctant people, just like John. We have those that want to do things their way. Like I said about Frank Sinatra's song, I did it my way. can't do it our way. You can't do it your way. We've got to do it God's way. If we're going to have revival, we've got to say, God, you are the one that's in control, so take over. I relinquish my control. But also to have revival, we have to meet some conditions. The steps of revival in 2 Chronicles 7.14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We have to humble ourselves. We don't like to humble ourselves. We like to be the one, don't we? We like to be the one. We've got to humble ourselves. Have you ever had true humility? Have you ever humbled yourself before God? Have you ever humbled yourself before your fellow man? But you see, the media, the world, everything says, don't humble yourself, be the one. You be first. Climb the ladder and use everybody else as the steps of the ladder. That's our motto. When I was coming up, doing all the things that I used to do, my motto was do unto others, then split. Or do unto others before they do unto you. But you know what? After I got saved, I realized that was the wrong attitude to have. But honestly and truly, isn't that our attitude today? Do unto others before they do unto us. Folks, if we're going to have a Bible, that cannot happen. 
you have to have a spirit of humility. God said, if my people will call to me and humble themselves. Are you closer to God today than you were yesterday? If not, you are in a backslidden condition and you need to get right. You need to humble yourself before God and say, God, I'm not where I need to be. This is in my life. That's in my life. I'm doing this. I have done this or whatever. And you need to repent and come clean. Humbling yourself means that you admit to God that you are not where you need to be. And he said, if my people, not the world, not everybody else, but my people, the ones who are, are saved, if they will humble themselves, and then, number two, we got to pray. He said, not only do you have to humble yourself, you got to pray. Pray is just simply talking to God like I'm talking to you right now. The reason... Churches are not revived today is because of the lack of prayer. Spiritual deadness comes from prayerlessness. Revival in Samuel's day came because of the prayers of a broken-hearted mother. In Nehemiah's day, revival came because of a broken-hearted man who had a burden for his homeland. He wanted to see God move. At Pentecost, God showed up because they were burdened. They were praying in the upper room. God told them, you go there and tarry there until I send it. And so they got together and they started praying. <clears throat> Back in Jonathan Edwards' day, in the state, the New England states, they had a great awakening because men started getting together and praying. One man started praying in an old abandoned storefront. And then a couple more started showing up. And then after a few weeks, there was 15 or 20. And then after a few weeks after that, multitudes started coming. Jonathan Edwards was so blind, he had a hole, his note, reaching notes up like this very close to his face and read them just like that. And he preached sinners in the hands of an angry God and he prayed and fasted for a week till he literally collapsed. And he got up and he read that. And they said the power of God fell on them so much they were hanging on to the pews till their knuckles were right. Light. And they said that they literally thought that the floor opened up and there was just a little tiny spider web that they were standing on and they were fixing to fall into hell at any moment. And people got saved by the drove and they had a great awakening. Folks, if we will pray and come together as one, we can see the same thing. But the problem is four or five of you over here want this, four or five of you over here want that, and we can't come together. We gotta be in one accord. One accord. God is the shepherd. I'm the under shepherd. And we're all to follow what God says. We got to relinquish power. And we, we, we got to relinquish it to Him. But then, number three, we got to seek God's face. We got to humble ourselves. We got to pray. And then we got to seek God's face. We have to be God conscious. We have to start changing the way we think. We got to start thinking of God and thinking what He wants us to do. What all do you think about during the day's time? Think about a lot, don't you? But do you think about God? God should be the forefront of your thoughts. Starting by reading your Bible in the morning. Say, God, what do you have for me today? Then you read a few scriptures or maybe a chapter or whatever. And then you dwell on that all day long. Say, God, what, what do you want me to learn out of this? We have to be God conscious. Not Randy conscious. Not Vera conscious. Not David conscious. But God conscious. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? We have to 
seek God's face. We'll have to lay aside a few things. We'll have to change the way we operate. Are you willing to do that? See, that, that's where the problem comes in. We're not willing to change. Do you, you, you really understand that? We really don't want to change, do we? We like things the way they are. I know a preacher that went to a church. He went to the piano movie. So he moved it where he wanted to. Old oh, buddy, the deacons got on the hymns and the Jedimiles got on him. Who gave you the right to move that piano? My great granny gave that piano. Blah, blah, blah. So what he did is he said, fine, put the piano back right where you want it. So they did. So guess what? Every month he would move it about an inch. Nobody noticed it. Another month go by, he moved it just a little more. And after about a year, it was where he wanted it. Nobody said a word. That's the way we think. And if we're going to have revival, we've got to get rid of that trashy thinking. What do they call it? Stinking thinking? We've got to get rid of that. We've got to focus on God. We got to do away with some of our plans and our desires and start saying, God, what are your plans and what are your desires? Our families don't know each other anymore. We don't even eat together no more. We run all different kind of ways. We're too busy on our cell phone, texting, Facebooking, Googling, doing all this kind of stuff. We've lost the family devotion. Or the family comes together at the dinner table and the daddy prays and reads the verse or two of scripture and then they have supper together. That's gone. Do you see how the devil has orchestrated all of this to keep us so busy that we don't have time for one another? Do you understand that? And the whole time that we don't have time for none of this, because we're too busy trying to work and make a living and take care of everything that the legitimizers and those that are in control are doing bad things and they keep trying to do more bad things and slip it on us. When's the last time you got together as a family and prayed? When's the last time that you ate together as a family. But then, number four, we got to seek God and turn from our wicked ways. Revival means that we turn from our wrong ways and we get right with God and we look to God. He says, you got to pray, you got to humble yourself, you got to seek God's face, but then also you got to turn from your wicked ways. That means the stuff that you're doing that ain't right, you got to get right. you got to quit doing it. How in the world could we expect revival when we're not willing to repent of wrongdoing? And without uh, repenting of wrongdoing, we're not going to see nothing. we got to get right. The pride, the arrogance, they're not talking to one another. If that, I'm just laying them out there. I'm just trying to fill in a few blanks. If you fit there, just you know, say that's me. Not talking to people, doing things that you shouldn't be doing, lying, cheating, steal, all that kind of stuff. They had a revival so great over there in England one time. To where the policemen had nothing to do and they just started getting together and started singing on the street corner. Y'all remember that? Have you ever heard about that or, or read about it or heard about that? Yeah. 
the donkeys and the mines wouldn't move no more because they all got saved. And the men would talk so trashy to the donkeys, that's the only way they could get them to move. But when they got right, they got saved, and they got cleaned up, they quit using all that foul language, and the donkeys wouldn't move. They, it was a foreign language to them. That's how good it got. And I want to see some of that stuff. But then the outcome of revival. When there is revival, there is a renewal of spiritual relationships. The people of God get right with one another and have wonderful fellowship. Revival is falling in love again with God all over. Christ becomes real to us. And not only is there a renewal of spiritual relationships, there is a renewal of spiritual rejoicings. Do you rejoice in the Lord? Or do you just come to church and go through the motions? Do you just come to church because you got to? Well, if I don't go, he's going to call me. He's going to send me a text. That shouldn't be the, the thinking. The thinking should be, I want to go to church because... I'm going to hear a word from God and, and, and I'm going to worship God and I'm going to sing praises unto Him. Hey, look, I know I ain't the greatest preacher in the world, okay? I know that. But, you know what? The more you pray for me, the better I'll get. It. And if you're not praying for me, if you're not praying for the church all through the week and you're not preparing, guess what? You show up here, you ain't going to hear nothing from God. But if you will pray for me, that I will preach what God wants you to hear. And if you will pray for one another, and if you will prepare all during the week and do your Bible study and read the Bible and pray and do that all week long and put God first, guess what? Your life will be revolutionized. Good things come from revival. When revival comes, things go from a little drip, drip, drip to a mighty flood rushing in. David said, Oh, Lord, will you revive us again that your people will rejoice in you? And I'm asking the Lord the same thing. Lord, will you revive us again that Mount Perrin will rejoice in you one more time? Lord, send it again one more time. Where are you at today? Are you with me? Or you say, no, we want to we keep everything like it is. Some of you may have a little authority or whatever. I like that authority. I like that power. I want to keep it. Well, you know what? If that's the attitude, we ain't going to have a Bible. you got to understand, it's, it's God. And it's God that gave you that little bit of authority. It's God that gives you that little bit of power. He don't, don't need anybody to run his church. His son died on the cross for the church. And he's got the church taken care of all by himself. And, and the scripture gives guidelines. He says you call a pastor. And he gives a qualification. Then you call some deacon. And he gives him qualifications. And he said, I gave some teachers, talking about spiritual gifts, some apostles and all this, so that each person has a spiritual gift, so that when we come together, everything is taken care of. He doesn't need just one person taking care of it all. He said, I want to split it up a little bit. I want you to be a teacher. I want you to be a preacher. I want you to be a missionary. I want you to be an evangelist, and so on and so forth. He's got it all taken care of, folks. Where are you at? Do you want to see revival? I mean, honestly, do you truly want to see revival? Can you pray with David, Lord, will you revive us again so that we can worship you one more time? That's my prayer. How about you? You want to see a move from God? I'm, I'm tired of all this junk that's going on in the world. I'm tired of it, y'all. I, I want to see a, a mighty move of God. And in order to 
see a mighty move of God, we're going to have to band together. We're going to have to come to one accord with each other. And we're going to have to pray together. And we're going to have to say, Lord, we're tired of running things around here. We want you to run. We want you to show up. Pray that this really penetrates your heart. I pray that God will really get your attention with this. Church ain't just a game, it ain't just a social club. It's not any of that. Church is because Jesus Christ died on the cross so that we can have eternal life. Church is so that we can come together and worship Him for what He did for us. This do in remembrance of me is what the communion table says. But we worry about everything else. We worry about our money. We worry about our jobs. We worry about our phones. We worry about our TVs. We worry about all kinds of stuff. We should be focusing on God. As the ladies come and as you stand, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. Where are you at? You want to see a mighty move of God? I do. Or are you just going to continue to go through the motions? Folks, I am tired of status quo. When we all get tired of status quo, We'll see a great move of God. We'll start telling people about Jesus Christ. We'll start witnessing like we should. He says, go into all the nations, telling them about Jesus Christ, teaching, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he says, all power is given to us to go and do that. You say, well, preacher, I can't do that. I know you can't, but God through you can because he gave you the power. Acts 1-8. So we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. If you need to come get saved, come on down. If you need to come get right with God, come on down. If you need to be prayed with, come on down. I'll pray with you. Whatever the case may be. If you need to go to somebody else that's here today, go to them. Get right. Talk to them. Get them to pray with you. You pray with them. Whatever the case may be. If you've got a problem, get it right. As you stand, what number are we going to sing? 251. 